The summer blockbuster season is in full swing at the moment, and you may be surprised to know that many of the year's biggest movies feature heavy British involvement. There was darkness, and it has survived. What's gonna happen? A climactic finale to Marvel's studio hit, For the Dark World, was shot at the old Royal Naval College here in Greenwich. And in recent times, many major Hollywood productions have been filmed at British locations, in British studios, and edited on computers at British visual effects companies. £1.1 billion was spent on film production in the UK in 2013, up 7.5% on the previous year, with around 42,000 people currently employed in film production. The British film industry has become big business. Elstree Studios, on the outskirts of North London, is one of the UK's biggest film studios. In recent times, it's housed a range of productions, from blockbuster movies like Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows, to TV fare such as Strictly Come Dancing and Big Brother. Built in 1926, the studios have a long and illustrious history. Alfred Hitchcock made most of his silent films here, and then went on to make the first talkie in the UK here, Blackmail. Uh, which was made at Astri Studios. And then in the middle of the 70s, along came a young American, and he wanted to make a science fiction film here. And that science fiction film was, of course, Star Wars, and it was George Lucas. And three of the Star Wars films were made here at Astri Studios. He was closely followed on by his friend, Steven Spielberg, who then made the three Indiana Jones films here. But a downturn in film production in the 80s and 90s led to Elstree's future coming under threat. Bought by a property speculator with half its site sold off, there was a real danger that the studios would close forever until locals, politicians and members of the film industry stepped in. Obviously, Elstree is a well-loved entity and a huge film industry campaign took place which then became a big local campaign and then became a big political campaign called Save Our Studios. And in 1996, the local council um, bought the studios from the property developer and then invested money back into the studios to redevelop the site. And in fact, this is one of the buildings here, the George Lucas stage, um, that they invested in. And it was a very wise move. This had been a very profitable move. It has been used for lots of top TV shows, lots of top feature films over the last sort of 20 years. Elstree now suffers a problem familiar with other British studios, having to turn away international productions due to a lack of capacity to meet growing demand. Elstree has plans to expand. We have a 10-year plan to take the studios forward with new building schemes, new studios, new workshops, new production offices. Most recently we've spent a good few million, um, some of that provided by the local authorities, some of that provided by the local enterprise partnership for Hertfordshire to actually clear an area at the back of the studios which um, was called The Mound and it's been there for about 30 years. It's where The Shining was actually done and so that was the snow covered area and the hotel was next door to it uh, for The Shining. Um, that's now been, that was 12 foot high, it's now been levelled and that gives us four acres of land suitable for building more stages and workshops which we're now working towards that end. The last 15 years have seen a dramatic change in how films are made. The majority of motion pictures are now shot on digital rather than film, with British studios not just facilitating the production of major Hollywood movies, but contributing to their dazzling visual effects as well. One of the most well-known VFX companies is Framestore. Located just off London's Oxford Street, this year the Framestore team won the Oscar for Best Visual Effects for their work on Alfonso Cuaron's Space Spectacular Gravity. We founded Framestore 28 years ago here in Soho at the beginning of uh, the application of computers to uh, making films and that. In fact, we were at the vanguard of it. And we started with things like pop promos for Culture Club and David Bowie, worked our way through that into big commercials until we eventually got to major television series like Merlin and uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland and uh, Gulliver's Travels for America. And then finally up into films when Hollywood arrived in London about sort of 15 years ago for the digital work. Well, some of the recent films we've done that um, have sort of been a pleasure to work on as well as given us good profile, things like War Horse, which you did with Steven Spielberg. Um, obviously, this year's big one was Gravity, which we made with Alfonso Cuaron. And the one that's given me a lot of fun at the moment, that's uh, James Gunn's uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. 
While success stories like Framestores stem from the UK's strong legacy of creative talent, it appears that only in the last few years has Hollywood noticed. Uh, well, here, here in the UK, we've had sort of a track record for making films going back 70 or 80 years and that. And uh, the thing that's really taken off this past decade is the fact that we have a real reputation for amazing creative work, not just in visual effects, which is what we do, but right across the board in camera work and costume design and acting, obviously, in particular, which therefore means that over time we've built very large capacity, which means now that any half a dozen films, Hollywood films, can happen in London at any one time now which makes us probably you know, the most significant production centre in the world. The growing demand for British studios and post-production facilities has come about through the government's increased efforts to attract international productions to the UK. The agency Film London was established just over 10 years ago to encourage more major movie productions to come to the capital. Since Film London was formed in 2003, we've seen a situation where over that decade, um, we've helped with all our industry partners and stakeholders to essentially double the amount of films and television programs and ads uh, that London has attracted in that period. I mean, and that's an extraordinary statistic. It means there's something like 40 film crews on the streets of London at any one time, any day of the week in London. One of the main reasons more productions have decided to base themselves in the UK has been the film tax relief introduced by the previous government in 2007. The film television tax relief came in originally in 2007 and that really helped to start to build this new infrastructure um, because it was a stable, um, really fraud proof uh, and, and very um, simple to use tax credit. And basically what it means is that you get a certain amount of tax relief on the money you spend if you pass a cultural test that shows that you are using British talent, that, you've got a, that it relates to British culture, you're using British technicians, you're using British visual effects. If you pass that, you then um, qualify to be able to get this tax relief. And in the case of films below £20 million, that could mean as much as 20% you know, of your budget you could get funded out of the tax relief over uh, 20 million pounds, then it's probably you know, something between 13 and 14 percent of your budget. But that's still a huge incentive. The thing is about that is that by offering that incentive, we get companies to come in, they get 13 or 14 percent. But for every pound we give in the Exchequer, they spend 12 pounds more. It's an extraordinary ratio. So although we're handing out money in terms of the incentive, we're getting it back in much, much greater numbers. So it's a fantastic deal, actually. The hope is that such tax credits will see the boom in British film spread to the other creative industries. What I want to be is the global content hub of the world, the place where everybody wants to come and make their games, to make their movies, to make their television series. I think we have all of that opportunity in front of us to really become a world leader because the thing is that it's not just about the infrastructure the other important point to stress is it's about the creative talent people love our actors they love our writers they love our directors they love our visual effects technicians and our crew and because we have that wellspring of creative talent together with this infrastructure I think we have a fantastic opportunity in the years to come with the new Star Wars movie and Avengers sequel both filming here in the UK at the moment the boom in the British film industry shows no signs of stopping a combination of the British talent on the offer and the tax credits in place means that in the coming years it's likely more and more of our films, TV shows and video games will be made right here in the UK.